In this video, we're going to dive into the programming language called R. Now, I'm going to assume that you have no experience with R. You might know it's a language and maybe that it's used for data science, but we're going to start with a very, very basic understanding of this programming language and then build up from there. The most important thing to realize about any programming language is just like it sounds, it's a language. So just like Spanish or Mandarin or pick whatever language you were asked to learn in high school, R has a couple of unique rules about it. So let's take a look at some of those now. First, the R language has something called a value. A value is going to be something that can be a number. It can be a name. It can be a letter. It can be a date. It can be a lot of different types of things. These are called values. R also has something called objects. An object is a little bit more abstract of an idea. You can think of an object as something that holds different things. So your object can hold a value. Your object can also hold multiple values. Um, it can be a number, it can be a result. It can be, like I said, a lot of different things. So one of the ways to think about this is a temporary object that is a container that holds different values. The last thing that you need to know is that R also has functions. Functions are going to be instructions for performing operations in this programming language. So let's say you have a number and it's inside of an object. You can tell R to do something to that number. Let's say you want to find the average of a number or a bunch of numbers, or you want to calculate what's half of a single number. It doesn't really matter. The function is really just what we call the instructions that we then use to operate on this value, this number, this object, etc. With these three primary elements of the R programming language, you'll need to understand there are some nuances about how we tell R what we're talking about and what it is. So first, let's just start with values. If a value is a number, that's just going to be a number by itself. But if a value is a word, then what we need to do is we need to tell R that it is a word and we put quotes around it. Now let's talk about objects. Because objects can store a lot of temporary things, the name of an object can also be very flexible. Sometimes we just call this x and we assign something to be x. Now, if x is in quotes, what R will think is that this is going to be a value. But if we have x outside of quotes just by itself, then R is going to say, aha, this is an object, and I will look inside my object to see what is there. The third element of R are functions. These are going to be some name followed by parentheses. Inside the parentheses are going to be arguments about the function, but don't worry about those quite yet. We'll get into those later. The key thing you need to know now is that functions are followed by parentheses, and that tells R that this is going to be a function. So let's review. You can have something, let's say, the name Matt. And if this is in quotes, then R will say, aha, okay, this is a value. But if you have the name Matt just by itself, without quotes, then it's going to be an object. And finally, if you have Matt with parentheses right after it, this is going to be a function. These are some of the nuances that you need to know about the R programming language to get started that will then tell R if it's handling a value or if it's handling an object or whether it's a function. All right, pop quiz. Which of these are numbers? Let's take them one at a time. The number one in quotes and the word O-N-E in quotes, these are both values. These are a special type of value called string. And so R thinks that these are a value, not a number. The word O-N-E by itself, this is an object. When we give R an object, R is going to look inside of it. The only one of these that is a number is the number one in this case. All right, second pop quiz. Which of these will work? Let's suppose that we assign the number one to the object O-N-E, okay? We have a little arrow here now, and this is going to then tell our object to put one inside of it, okay? And now, which of these will work? We're going to try to take the log transformation of the number one. So the first one will work 
because we can log transform a number. The second option, log, with the number one in quotes, will not work, because here what we're trying to do is take the log transformation of a string, of a word, and that doesn't work. The second one also doesn't work for the exact same reason. We can't log transform something that's not a number. However, the last option, log one by itself, will work because we assigned our object the value one. One of the last fundamental things that we want to teach you in this video is about something called a data frame. Now, data can be stored in a lot of different ways. I just told you that we can take some numbers and store them in an object. But there's a special type of object called a data frame that is going to store numbers that should look pretty familiar. If we look at this data frame, we can see that there are rows and that there are columns. This should be quite familiar to Excel, which also has rows and it has columns. However, we can perform transformations on these rows, on the columns, or on individual values within the data frame. In this data frame or data table, we can extract single rows or single columns out of this. This is important because one of the main things that we do in data science is work with data in tables. There's one last thing we want to do before we finish this video. If you follow the link below, you can head over to a scratch pad that we've generated for you to play around with some of these concepts. If you hit the blue button in the corner here, what you'll see is that this code will run in the space right here, which is called a console. You can see that this is going to print out something that looks like a data frame. This has rows. It also has some columns. This should look really familiar for users of Excel. Let's practice extracting the first column from this data table. The way to do that is we're going to type the name of the data frame, and then we're going to hit this little dollar sign. And as you can see, a list of column names pops up from a list here. So we can just type that in. If we now run the code, we should see two things. In the first box, we end up with the data frame that we see. In the second box below, we've extracted the column from the first column here. So go ahead and try a couple of different column names and see what that looks like. We can also assign this to an object if we want to use it later. So now if we take this, we'll just type in an object and then a little backwards arrow operator. That's going to take this part of the equation and assign it to this part. That's similar to what we just saw in the quiz. If we click Run Code, we won't see the second part now. To do that, we'll just type in the name of the object, and we'll go ahead and run the code again. That allows the object to be printed out. So go ahead and take some time to play around in the scratch pad. If you want, you can always hit Start Over, and that will clear everything out, and you can just hit Run Code anytime that you want to try this. So in this video, we went over some of the basics of the R programming language. We learned about values, objects, and functions. And we even looked at some examples of how this works in real life. 